welcome in this session we will discuss design and optimization of uh, solar thermal systems uh, before going for the discussion of design of solar thermal systems let us understand what is the general configuration of a solar water heating system that is a thermal system so this figure shows a general configuration of solar water heating system so the system consists of set of collectors these collectors may be flat plate collector or concentrating collector so these collectors receive solar heat and this solar heat with the help of solar radiation they receive solar heat and with the help this solar heat is extracted by circulating water through the collector so water is here in a store this is a storage tank water in the storage tank is circulated through the wall it is circulated with the help of a pump to the collectors so water is circulated and then it moves out from the collector after receiving heat so water becomes hot when it moves through the collectors and hot water goes to the storage tank again through these walls these are the walls to control the flow of water to the storage tank the temperature of water or maybe uh, in that case any fluid temperature for our illustration let us call let us consider water as a working fluid so the temperature of water in the storage tank is tst so the storage tank accommodates hot water the storage tank has a vent to maintain the atmospheric pressure because sometimes uh, in the circumstances of overheating uh, water water is converted into steam and then this this steam exerts pressure on the inner walls of the storage tank increasing the pressurized storage tank so to avoid that to maintain the atmospheric pressure a vent is provided which will allow the steam formed uh, in the vent from storage tank hot water is supplied to the load so this is the demand so with the help of a pump hot water is pumped to the load uh, due to variable availability of solar energy the temperature of water may not be desired temperature so the temperature of water in the storage tank may not be the desired temperature so in that case if the temperature of water is less then auxiliary is needed to heat the water further to the load temperature for example if load temperature if the demand is at 60 degrees celsius of hot water and if the storage tank has 55 degrees celsius of uh, hot water then uh, 5 degrees celsius of further heating is needed in the auxiliary if storage tank or the solar system produces hot water sufficient at a sufficient temperature then this auxiliary is uh, bypassed and then the water goes directly to the load this is a open loop system so water which is circulated and stored in a storage tank it is consumed by the load it is given to the load and it is consumed by the load it doesn't go back it doesn't come back to the storage tank so this is a open loop system now to make up for the consumed water the overhead tank supplies the hot water uh, supplies the room temperature water or atmospheric temperature water to the storage tank so this is the make up water supply so the temperature of water is at atmospheric temperature here and sometimes what happens the temperature of water in the storage tank is more than the desired temperature for example again if the load or the demand temperature is 60 degrees celsius and maybe in the month of april or may the storage tank has a higher temperature say 75 degrees celsius temperature so in that case the hot water is mixed some make up water at room temperature is mixed with the hot water and it is made to 60 degrees celsius and this 60 degree after mixing the 60 degrees celsius of water is supplied to the demand that's how the demand is made so this is a general configuration of the solar water heating system uh, i am repeating again the components pump which is taking hot water from the storage tank this is a make up water supply which is a cold water supply 
which supplies water to storage tank also and to the mixing chamber also. Storage tank is maintaining the atmospheric pressure with the help of wind. Water is pumped from the storage tank and is circulated through the collectors. Solar energy is incident on the collectors and water uh, becomes hot and hot water is again recirculated. So this is a loop which continuously goes on as long as sun is shining. Now the hot water in the storage tank is pumped to the load. If the temperature is less then auxiliary is needed. If temperature is more than the load demand then a mixing chamber is used by bypassing the auxiliary. So this is a general configuration of a solar water heating system. When we talk of design, the meaning of design in solar thermal system is sizing of components and predicting the annual performance. Then for a specified demand, determination of collector area, how many collectors are required for a specified demand, what is the storage volume required and what is the auxiliary system size required or duty on auxiliary system. And then annual solar fraction. Annual solar fraction, the concept of annual solar fraction is explained in the next slide. And then prediction of economic viability. So all these determination of all these parameters, sizing and the sizing of the components and then predicting the uh, economic viability, uh, it forms the design. So these parameters, determination of these parameters make the design of solar thermal systems complete. Design parameters, which are the design parameters? Collector area is the design parameter. Storage volume is the design parameter. Solar fraction. Solar fraction is the ratio of load, demand, the quantum of demand made by solar energy by the total demand. Okay, so suppose this is the total demand and this is the auxiliary required. Then this is the solar fraction. So it, it also can be expressed in this expression with this expression 1 minus Q auxiliary by you low. Then uh, another design parameter is auxiliary, quantum of auxiliary required or rating of auxiliary required and then load made by solar energy. Now uh, this is the illustration of solar fraction, how solar fraction is uh, determined. Suppose demand of hot water in an apartment building in Pune, suppose there is an apartment building in Pune that requires 3000 liters per day of hot water at 55 degrees Celsius for 365 days. So this is a demand. Okay. Then the annual load for this apartment building is uh, can be calculated like this QL is equal to M Cp into delta T that is TL is the demand temperature or load temperature. Ta is the ambient temperature and is the number of days over which the demand exists. So if we uh, substitute the uh, figures here. 3000 liters per day is the demand, 4.18 kJ per kg Kelvin is the specific heat of water, 55 degrees Celsius is the load, 25 degrees Celsius is the ambient temperature which is assumed and 365 days is the number of, a number of days over which the demand uh, exists. So if we perform this calculation it comes out to be 137 gigajoules per year. So the annual load, annual thermal demand is 137 gigajoules per year. Now a solar water heater is installed on the terrace of the apartment of this apartment which fully meets this demand for 245 days. So the demand is there for 365 days. Out of that uh, 245 days solar water heating system is meeting this demand. So the annual demand made by solar energy we can calculate is again the same expression. Daily demand into Cp into temperature difference into number of days over which the demand is made by solar energy. So this uh, calculation comes out to be 92 gigajoules per year. So this is the demand made by solar energy. Now annual duty on auxiliary is what? Whatever is the total demand minus the demand made by solar energy. So this is 137 minus 92, 45 gigajoules per year is the annual duty on the auxiliary. Now what will be the annual solar fraction? It is the demand made by solar energy divided by the total demand. That is 92 gigajoules per year by 137. So the annual solar fraction for the solar system installed at an apartment building in Pune is 0.67. Uh, this is a very uh, elementary calculation for solar fraction. 
uh, in fact there are many factors which determine the solar fraction and it is a function of many parameters that we will discuss one by one but just to understand what is the the broad meaning of solar fraction this illustration is given here now what are the challenges in the design of a solar system the first challenge is energy collected by solar energy of course the energy collected and energy supplied are the functions of solar radiation the ambient temperature and other meteorological parameters such as wind speed so energy collected depends also on a wind speed humidity clearness index so all these factors the determine the another quantum of or the amount of energy collected and also intensity of solar radiation varies over a day as well as over a year so this is a challenge in a design so input of solar input of energy is variable so this is demonstrated here so variation of solar radiation intensity over a typical day so on each day at 6 o'clock in so this figure this characteristic shows on x axis time of the day and then on y axis radiation intensity in watt per meter square now at the morning in the morning 6 o'clock solar radiation intensity is almost zero and then from 6 o'clock the radiation intensity goes on increasing so this red line indicates global radiation ig watt per meter square and then this uh, this color uh, radiation uh, this this line indicates the diffuse radiation intensity so there is a difference between diffuse Uh, and uh, global radiation intensity so what we can infer from this figure is global radiation intensity goes on increasing it is maximum at the solar noon and then again it goes on decreasing after noon same thing is true for diffuse radiation it goes on increasing it is maximum at uh, the noon and then again it goes on decreasing so there is a variation over a solar a variation over a day as well as there is a variation of solar radiation intensity over a year so this characteristic again shows the months january february march april etc on x axis till december so january to december these are the months in a year on x axis and again the global radiation intensity on y axis now we can see here in january the solar radiation intensity average solar radiation intensity is 790 in february it is 883 watt per meter square it is in march 951 in april it is 974 in may it is 957 and then so on it goes on again decreasing so the least solar radiation intensity is in the month of august that is 598 and the maximum intensity is in the month of april that is 974 so against the variation of this solar radiation intensity over the year how to design a solar equipment that is a big challenge here for example suppose one is to design a solar thermal system against the demand of 45 suppose the demand is 4500 liters of hot water at 60 degrees celsius okay and that water is heated from 25 degrees celsius to 60 degrees celsius in 8 hours now assume the system to be open loop okay as we have uh, seen uh, previously the system is open loop now design on winter basis now what is what is the solar radiation in winter basis in the, these are the winter months october november december and january these are the winter months so if we design on the winter basis when global radiation is 742 so when global radiation on the basis of december month of radiation in the month of december 742 watt per meter square so if we design the system on the basis of 742 watt per meter square we need to use the hotel willier bliss equation for the basic design. now this is a hotel willier bliss equation we are again revisiting those who want to understand more about the hotel willier bliss equation they are requested to refer my previous presentations uh, i will again briefly explain the hotel willier terms in the hotel willier bliss equation here again the uh, qu is a useful heat gain rate in watt ac is the collector area it is the solar radiation intensity on an inclined surface f r tau alpha is the characteristic of the collector f r u l is again a characteristic loss coefficient of the collector t i is the inlet temperature of 
fluid entering the collector and ta is the ambient temperature so these two these terms form the hotel villiers bliss equation which is the basis of the sizing of a solar system now in the above in this equation as the system is uh, open loop the uh, fluid which is entering the collector is at the atmospheric temperature only so this is ta so this term becomes zero so only this part of hotel villiers bliss equation remains now 742 is it fr tau alpha if we design against uh, take 0.65 so fr tau alpha is 0.65 it is 742 ac is not known and qu we can calculate 4500 liters of water heated from 25 degrees celsius to 60 degrees celsius per day so mcp delta t this expression gives 658.32 mega joules per day of the useful heat gain rate so if you equate this useful heat gain rate if you substitute uh, this figure here and then evaluate determine the value of collector area so the collector area comes out uh, will come out to be 31 meter square so if we design the system on a winter basis winter solar radiation basis the collector area will be 31 meter square so this system will over produce in summer because in summer the solar radiation intensity is very high of the order of 974 so in that case it will pro over produce in summer we need to read we need to dump the system so if the system is designed to meet the demand in winter now on the basis of this solar radiation intensity this this system will meet the demand in winter but it will pro produce excessive heat in summer leading to energy dumping and energy dumping is nothing but uh, the the loss of economy is loss of capital because the capital cost of solar energy solar equipment is high so high capital costs of solar thermal systems make this over design restrictive so we cannot go for a over designing of the system so designing on a winter basis is not something which is desirable on the other hand if we design the same system on the global uh, on the on the summer basis when the global radiation is 974 watt per minute i'll show you here when if we design the system on the basis of this april where the solar radiation intensity is 974 then in that case the collector area again substituting uh, everything here same parameters here and keeping ac only unknown so the collector area comes out to be 25 meter square now this system will under this system will give meet the desired load in summer but it will under produce in winter now if it is designed on the summer demand if the system is de designed uh, on the uh, basis of summer radiation then it may be undersized so the undersized system will not produce the desired result in winter so it will require a large backup again there will be a higher capital uh, cost uh, which is needed so a system designer has to strike a balance between uh, these two radiation intensities and decide on what radiation intensity uh, he is going to he or she is going to design the system so this is really a challenge before design of a solar thermal systems all solar thermal systems now another point is uh, we have discussed solar fraction solar fraction 1 so so the value of solar fraction as uh, we will revisit the uh, slide again here here solar fraction so the value of solar the least value of solar fraction is zero okay so if the value of f is zero what does it mean no solar and this this will be zero okay solar and the demand made by solar energy will be zero so the entire demand entire load will be supplied by the auxiliary system if f solar fraction is zero another extreme case hypothetical case is f equal to 1 so if f is equal to 1 if you substitute f equal to 1 here the uh, the load made by auxiliary will be zero it means the entire load over the year is supplied by solar energy but this is practically not possible because of this solar radiation intensity you can say this is a variable so in july august september june july august september solar radiation intensity is least here and again uh, these are the monsoon months Uh, in which there will not be any uh, uh, solar sunshine direct sunshine there will be cloudy uh, atmosphere so it is not practically possible to 
to design the system on solar fraction one that is 100 percent solar energy okay so some backup has to be kept now what should be the extent of this backup what is the fraction of this backup or in a nutshell we can say that what what is the uh, the value of solar fraction whether it should be 0 0.9 90 percent solar fraction 80 percent solar fraction so the system is to be designed against what value of solar fraction this is again a great challenge there must be some some basis for designing for deciding the solar fraction okay when backup becomes necessary so what must be the optimum solar fraction and corresponding system size that offers the maximum economic benefit this is the this is again one of the major challenge before the uh, system design in discussing the challenges before solar thermal system design these are the integration challenges integration of components there are a lot of components there storage tank which has a certain characteristic solar energy solar collectors so the characteristic of all the system of the system performance it is possible to study the characteristic of collector storage and load individually okay the analysis is be analysis becomes difficult when the components are integrated we can independent, independently study solar collectors, their characteristic, their behavior. We can independently model storage, storage tank, its behavior and then its characteristic, loss coefficient and everything. Load also, demand characteristic also, we can individually study. But when we integrate all the components, then it becomes very difficult to estimate the system performance because the system performance becomes non-linear with storage effects and the time varying force functions everything is dynamic everything in every component in the system becomes dynamic and then the estimation of the performance and sizing becomes uh, a bit difficult so for the purposes of design the nonlinear performance is difficult to generalize in easy to use form so these are the challenges before the solar thermal system designer uh, we will continue our discussion so these are the challenges and we will continue the discussion about design and optimization in the second session thank you